right, Angela, it's so great to be virtually chatting with you. Super excited. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so how are you doing today? Like right now in this very moment? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm a little cold, but I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my name is Dontara Terrell, and I know time is limited, so we are just going to dive right in and get started. We have a lot to cover. I want to talk to you about, you know, the new season of Snowfall. I also want to talk to you about motherhood and just your career trajectory. Um, let's so, do it. Yes, let's do it. So my first question, um, I read in a previous interview that one word you would use to describe your character storyline this season is boss. So yeah. what is your definition of a boss? A boss is somebody who can get the thing, get the job done. The boss is somebody who can uh, grab and wrangle other people to get the job done in the way that they want the job done. And the boss is also somebody who can be um, compassionate and and um, thoughtful of not only the job at hand, but of their, their um, staff, you know? Mm -hmm. So how would you describe Aunt Louie as being the hero of her own story this season? Well, you know, <laughs> last season, Louie was shot and almost killed. And so she is laser focused this year on what's important to her who's important to her and how to get things done the way that she knows things can, can be done. And so um, she does, she's not taking no for an answer and, and she is taking her, her story by the reins, you know, what she wants to see, what she wants to do, who she wants to be involved, all of that. She's, she's, she's taking it into her own hands for sure. For sure. She really is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so how would you say um, Aunt Louie and Jerome, their their relationship has grown since being first introduced to us in season one? Man, um, well, I think they've always loved each other. I think how they speak to each other has changed. I think there's a deeper understanding of their importance to each other and when somebody is important to you, you 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 don't take them for granted as much. When when you had the realization that oh this person can go away. Either they can walk away or they can be killed or I can be killed. You know what I mean? So when it, when there's a deeper understanding that they don't always have to be here, I, I think you appreciate them more and you let them know that you appreciate them more. So I think that we see them more mature, we see them more driven in the business and also in, in their connection. They always um, are fighting to, to find each other, you know, if they, if they start to veer off. Yeah, I feel like they're such a dynamic duo because like you said, they always have each other's back, even though sometimes they may not necessarily agree with each other, but it doesn't matter. They're still gonna mm -hmm. have each other's back at the end of the day. That's right. That's yeah. right. When do you always agree with somebody, especially when you're dealing with personalities as big as Louis and Jerome? You know, they're they're both very, very, very passionate people with very big personalities. So they're not always gonna see eye to eye. You know, they just have to learn how to how to handle and and manage that all that passion. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. And <laughs> you know, switching gears, we're gonna talk about your career trajectory a little bit. So, you know, mm -hmm. rejection can be a reality that, you know, many actors face. Well, it is a reality that many actors face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you manage those moments of rejection early in your career and bounce back to get to where you are today? Um, I don't know that I necessarily managed it in the beginning of my career. I think I've learned to manage it. Um, in the beginning, it's hard, you know, to get so many no's. I mean, you know, you're going to get no's that it is a, a given and people tell you and you learn it and da, 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 da. but um, the reality of it really is hard, especially when you think you are perfect for a role or when you think you went in there and you killed it. And then it's worse than not getting a no. It's you don't hear from them at all. <laughs> and so I've, I had many, many um, sessions of tears and moments where I was just a puddle on the floor I didn't know if I should keep going. Was I good enough? Am I talented enough? Am I this enough? Am I that enough? 
Why is this happening? Why is this taking so long? Maybe I should just find something else to do on and on and on. So lots and lots and lots of tears, lots and lots of picking myself up off the floor and, you know, trying again and getting back out there. Lots of being holed up in my New York apartment, eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and grits. <laughs> and then lots of stepping back out on the stoop and being breathing in that air and that energy and and knowing, okay, I can do this. Let's let's do it again. Let's try it again. And and eventually, you know, you have to learn to let it go. Let it go. Auditioning is is your job for a long time. Um, and you go and you give it everything, a hundred percent in the room, and then you let it go. You you live your life. And what's for you is for you, and nobody can take that away. Well, I feel like it was so many like just lessons and what you just said, not just even in terms of career, but personally, in terms mm -hmm. of just, just live your life, let it mm -hmm. go. And what's mm -hmm. for you will be for you. And sometimes like you're going to have those moments where nothing is going as planned, but it always works out in the end. You just have to keep your, right. you know, pick yourself up and keep going. That's absolutely right. Absolutely. And, you know, one thing I really appreciate about the work you do outside of the show um, is that you're committed to representing and speaking about Black joy and issues pertaining to Black maternal health. So can you tell me more about, like, your intentions behind your commitment and speaking out about these topics? Yeah, well, I just, you know, in getting pregnant and having a baby and all of the beauty and joy and miraculousness and majesty that was that period of time and is in, in, in parenthood, I learned a lot and some unexpected things happened. And so I learned even more than I thought I was going to learn. And, um, and I just really want to share that information with, with Black women, other Black women and Black families because so much of it is not, you don't know until you have to know. And then I had an amazing birth team and I had an a, amazing um, reach for, in, uh, for resources that, and at the end of my pregnancy, I looked back and I was like, ooh, I spent a lot of money to have this baby. And I thought, well, what if I wasn't in a TV show? What would that have looked like? And, and, and it is very upsetting for me to imagine um, a woman not able to feel safe and to feel joyous in this very miraculous time of her life and to feel like she doesn't have the support and she doesn't have the resources that she needs um, in order to, to have a, a healthy, safe um, pregnancy and birth. And so I really wanted to not only help Black women understand that there are resources out there um, to, to support you, but to know how to get those, get to, you know, get access to those resources and to be able to afford those resources and to be able to be prepared even before you get pregnant so that you understand what is happening with your body so that you can have a healthy birth. And then above and beyond just having a healthy birth and surviving you know, birth, to be thriving in that moment, to be able to be joyous and full of love, stress-free or you know, as, as little stress as one can have mm -hmm. because birth is stress. The act the action of giving birth, it is a stressful thing. And so we're then piling on all of our other stresses, you know, from both the outside and from within, it just creates um, disaster, you know? And, and birth is meant to be beautiful. It's meant to be a, a, a welcoming of new life into this world. So I just, I want us to be able to, to have that and to thrive in that. That's my intention. But I think one of the most important things that you said was just um, shedding light and just um, allowing women to know that they have resources, how to get these resources, because some, a lot of times people don't know. So what you mm -hmm. don't know, you can't really. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah. And then you also said something about, you know, just your body. 
Um, and just in terms of pregnancy, like during pregnancy and after pregnancy, you know, your body goes through numerous changes. Uh, mm -hmm. So what would you suggest to other women to help them connect with their bodies to feel more in tune with themselves? Mm, I suggest just sitting, taking a moment every day, whatever you got, five minutes, even three minutes, even just a moment to just sit with yourself in silence and breathe, connect to your breath connect to your, where you are in the space, feel the air around you on your skin, just breathe. Even that alone, it changes the game so much. It puts you in the present moment, allows you to become aware that in this present moment, you're okay. You're breathing, your body is doing what it's supposed to do you're okay. You know, I just, just I, that alone, right? Just that alone. And you're absolutely right. That is a game changer. And I just started like incorporating meditation into my, into my mornings, into my day. And mm -hmm. I was like, when I, you know, come out of it, I'm like, wow, I feel, I feel a little lighter. I feel a little different, mm -hmm. but it, yeah, it, it really is a game changer. Just sitting there being still with yourself, yeah. even if it's just yeah. for a few minutes, it doesn't have to yeah. be like 45 minutes, 30 minutes, nope. just a couple minutes just a couple minutes. I used to do 45 minutes every day. Now I have a child and she's like, mommy, <laughs> milk. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wait, okay. <laughs> so now it's five minutes. If that's all I got, that's all I need. You know, and people think that meditation is a whole thing. Ooh, ooh. And it can get, you know, there are levels to, you know, everything. Right. But at the baseline, just sitting, taking a moment to sit in silence and breathe, pay attention to your breath, you know, when your mind starts wondering and it will just bring it back to observing your breath, what's happening. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. and, and what piece of advice did you take from your mom once you became a mother? Hmm. You know, that is a huge question right now because I'm doing a lot of work on, on, on healing the, the, mother daughter bond the break in the bond that a lot of us experience through um generational trauma mm -hmm. and i don't you asked me a specific question what did i learn what 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 advice did i take from my mom mm -hmm. and i'm going to answer from like around the corner okay. because i think more important than what advice did i take from her it's, it's a, a new understanding of how much she loves me. Mm. I could never have understood that if I had not had a child of my own because the depth that I love this little girl is like, I don't, there are no words, right? And I'm like, man, people tell you all the time, you're gonna love your kids more than everything and you're like yeah yeah and then you're like oh my god my heart is just like my chest is like ripped open and my heart has like is in the palm of my hand like I just love and my mother loved me like that so for all the mistakes all the generational trauma all the moments where we didn't get along and we you know screamed at each other for all the moments that I thought she should have did this she should have done this and she didn't do that and the whatever whatever and and for all the hugs and the kisses I did not know what those hugs and kisses really meant for her like yes I felt comforted I know my mom loves me but I didn't know what she was feeling and and that it's just like, man, my mom is just, she's amazing. Uh, well, first off, you just had me about to tear up. I had to like pull, pull yeah. it back. <laughs> <laughs> but do you find that you've like, you've learned your mom in like a different capacity with now you being a woman yourself and you being a, a mom and a wife that you are like learning different I guess, facets of your mother. 
Oh, yes. <laughs> I understand her so much more. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's why you be mad about that. You know, okay, got it, got it, right. You know, or that's why you got it. She, you know, my mom is super strong. She, oh, that woman, super strong. Um, and she, and, and underneath that strength is incredible vulnerability. And I, I did not know that. I didn't realize that about my mom until I became a grown woman with a husband and now a child. And I'm like, oh, now I see. It's just, it's just so much. It, she, my mom is a phenomenal woman. And, and you don't have to be, you don't have to have all the degrees. You don't have to, you know, speak out and do all the things to be a phenomenal woman. Right. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I want to talk quickly about um, Detroit, you know, so, yeah. yes. So Detroit is so rich in culture, history and artistry, mm -hmm. you know, oh, I'm a Midwest yeah. uh, girl as well. I'm from Ohio, Youngstown, Ohio. So, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> my dad still talks about going to Detroit every weekend. <laughs> We have a lot of family there, like. Okay. <laughs> so can you tell me, um, what is something about your hometown that you carry with you to this day? Hmm. That it's dynamic and complex and beautiful in all of that. Um, Detroit has some very beautiful areas and some very beautiful people. And I had some very beautiful experiences. And then Detroit has some, a lot of ugly to it and a lot of trauma and a lot of, of tragedy. And those, all of those things combined created me, created the life that I had and have and created so many, uh, there's so much amazing talent mm -hmm. and contributions to this world that came out of Detroit. And I don't think you get that in the same way, you know, if you didn't have all of that stuff blending together and, 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 and you know, making these beautiful spirits, these beautiful people, these beautiful activists, these beautiful, you know, contributors to society you don't you don't get that in the same way if it, if it didn't have all of that color and layer and complexity mm -hmm, for sure yeah and so I take that all of that with me yes and like you said a lot of my friends from Detroit I'm like it, it's so many so much talent <laughs> yeah like it's just so much talent so yeah Detroit is just beautiful <laughs> yeah and then, lastly when people hear or reference Angela Lewis what are three words you want to be synonymous with your name? Mm, three words synonymous with Angela Lewis. Light. Depth. Love. Love it. So like you're exuding love and light and attracting it as well? Yeah, absolutely. And it's more than surface level. You have so much depth in Oh, yeah. Everything. Oh, absolutely. I'm yeah, happy. depth in everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for this. I had a great time chatting with you. And congratulations. Oh, thank you. I did, too. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was great to meet you, too. Right, you have a good one. You. you, too. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>